from reading to order. We do have a quorum. Um, so before we start, let's do the introductions. Hey, I'm Siobhan Paracone. I'm delegate from Orange. And I'm Bob Klein, uh, delegate from East Montpelier. Rama Schneider, delegate from Williamstown. And I'm Alan Gilbert. I'm a delegate from Worcester. Rebecca Schrader, I'm the clerk. So the first thing is agenda revisions. I kind of got the, one of the things I'd like to do is I kind of got the impression that people were interested more in a 90-minute meeting than a 120-minute. So after thinking about the agenda as I sent it around just because of the topics, is everybody comfortable with just going for 90 minutes? I think so. Which is fine by me. I, I mean, because I, I rewrote the timing on this to, you know, I still tried to fit everything in there. I just said a few more, a few less minutes on different topics, but if we need more or less. Anyway, so I will work very hard, and sometimes I'll be a little overbearing, but I will make sure we get out of here at 2.30. Okay? 2.30, hey, that's great. <laughs> All right, well, that's, okay. Let's try 3.30. <laughs> hey, why not? Uh, maybe I was out west a little further. Okay, so is there any uh, any other agendas other than timing that people are interested in? Agenda revisions? I wondered about the budget. Okay, yeah, whether I, that should be a separate item and whether, and, and, and maybe it's covered by something already in here. Yeah, I, I let me see, which, which one? The preparation for audits and compliance. That, that one yeah. comes under that section, I, th I thought. But we'll, we'll find out because there, there's also the... In other words, yes, the budget fits in there somewhere. Yeah. You know, all that budget discussion. So the note taker um, expectations, uh, I don't mind taking notes. You know, that, that's it's fine by me. Uh, I, I, I'm i used to taking notes to meet the legal requirements, but I also think that we also need to, you know, as we discuss and draw up lists or we have concepts or ideas that we want to bring forward to the full board, they should be included in the minutes just to make sure that they get mentioned. Yeah. Why don't, let, let me suggest this and, and see if people will go for it. I think it's a fair thing to actually rotate note takers. Yep. And it might be good for you to do the first set so we have some sense of what your expectations as chair are of what you want in the minutes. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that's that's fine. Okay. Yeah. I don't mind at all because actually I had planned to be a regular thing at, on the agenda to take a couple minutes and pick a note taker for the meeting. I think it'd be, I, I mean, I, I, I don't mind just rotating around. I, I okay. People are willing to do that. It seems fair and all that kind of stuff. All right. So I, I'll, take it, I'll take it tonight, uh, today, this afternoon. So any other any other thing else for note taker uh, expectations? If it's beyond a motion made, um, essentially, uh, you know, just to quickly outline the fact that we maybe discussed an item. I'm not going to put in extra unless, as a group, we feel that it needs to get passed on to the full board. I think that's fair. You know, and there, you know, there there's some minimal requirements on um, committee meeting norms. So uh, we're moving along pretty good here. I was actually quite generous with some of the minutes I left on some of these things. So the committee meeting norms, I, I don't know if people feel that there needs to be a discussion on those or not. Basically, when I run a meeting, my job as chair is to make sure everybody gets some input, to make sure we come to conclusion on decisions that need to be made, make sure we stick to an agenda, and we get out of here on time. And uh, the ex my expectation on myself and everybody else is that we're going to sit here and be civil and have civil discussion regardless. Sounds good. Just one quick note. Does anybody um, need Wi-Fi that doesn't? I would like Wi-Fi. It's Vermont. Um, it's BCLF guest is the network. And the passwords are on the board. <coughs> okay, I yeah. should sign in mm -hmm. just, just in case I need my calendar. So then, there are a lot of networks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah, I'm connected to somebody already. Who'd you connect to? I don't know. Well, well you I, were down. At, I was over in the coffee shop, so oh, I okay. had somebody over there. You know? Yeah, I'm not even seeing BCLF guest. It's sometimes pretty far down because it's the the router's actually downstairs, so it's 
You would think it would be the strongest signal since you're here, but it's not necessarily so the strongest number. Which one am I looking for? VCLF uh, guest. And that was, I'm sorry, I, I'm going to make you repeat it. The password was? It's oh, on the it's board on the board behind you? Vermont. Vermont. With yeah. a capital V and then capital C, capital yeah. L, capital F. I think I'm an Xfinity person here. <laughs> That's sorry. Right. You're allowed to be. That's okay. Okay, so th this is this is one I think it's good, kind of decides like where to put the budget and stuff in this discussion. The committee charge, and the what I have here is just to uh, review the committee charge and as we feel that we need it to develop a common understanding of what our realm of action is and possibly any questions that we need to bring back to the board if we have any confusion about it. So the committee charge was, you know, kind of simple. Uh, oversight over funding, bank account research, and preparation for audits and compliance. In the agenda, I broke them down into oversight of funding, bank account research, and preparation of audits. I interpreted that to mean oversight only applied to funding. You know, we weren't overseeing bank account research. We were supposed to do bank account research. Mm -hmm. And we weren't overseeing the preparation for audits and compliance at this point. But we were actually going to do the preparation. Um, I could see that last one changing if we go to a, a regular treasurer. But, so. and, and what's actually meant by compliance? Are you thinking it means... Yeah, right. <laughs> Are you thinking it means compliance with requirements for reports? Or just financial matters? General financial matters? or I mean, is there a formal definition in the financial world of what the word compliance means? Uh, well, I think it would, de yeah, it depends on what you need to be in compliance with. So, you know, like right. As a, and, and what it, you're doing. Yeah, what rules apply to our particular entity. Mm -hmm. Financial rules or all kinds of rules? Yeah, well, whatever I would think would be. Oh, yeah, good question. Because, I mean, a statute has all kinds of rules in it, and we can't be responsible. Yeah, for I would say just the financial rules no, just relating the financial to okay. the, the but district. if that's the case, then we need to let others <laughs> yeah. know that we're only looking at that sliver and then somebody else... I would think that the policy committee would be tasked with <clears throat> the broader compliance, the compliance with the with the other parts of the statute. Yeah. Or the executive committee, one of the two of them. Right. Mm -hmm. Not us. Yeah, no, well, I mean, <laughs> not, <laughs> not, not, <laughs> no, it doesn't make sense for the finance committee. Yeah, no, right. Yeah. So. I just worried about that when I saw it because compliance is a huge word. You know? uh, yeah. So I, I'm going to just put down committee is looking for precise guidance. Okay. Guidance. Get the word fiduciary in there, so that's a good word. <laughs> fiduciary responsibility. I can't even spell guidance anymore. G U, what? G U I, right? D U I D. Thank you. -D. That's where I was missing. I try to spell it how I pronounce it. Precise guidance on what is meant Regarding compliance or something. by compliance. Um, anybody have any otherwise have any questions as far as, you know, I mean, the areas that we're, uh, oversight over funding, we don't have any funding, so I'm not really, I, I don't know how, would, what that would look like, but I'm not even sure that would end up staying with us, what do you think, would it? But it's there now. Well, I, I don't think it means what I originally thought it meant, which was that we were being tasked with fundraising. I think what it means is we're supposed to watch to make sure what people say is supposed to happen and does happen is consistent with the way we have agreed to raise funds. Huh. So I, I, I didn't, because if you remember there was, the, there was a conversation at the board meeting about what's the difference between the finance committee and a development committee. Right. And it's usually a development committee that, that fundraises. You know? Right. And the finance committee typically is in charge of making sure that that everything the development committee says is happening really is happening and make sure money is coming in like it's supposed to. And that the bills are being paid. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, and that. 
So how would you say that if you were going to break that down into one short sentence? You're an attorney. You must be able to do I'm that. I'm not an attorney. That's me. Yo, you're not. That's right. I'm sorry. I shouldn't keep calling you that. I'm not, not that I like attorneys, but I, I keep forgetting you're not because of your position you held with the ACLU for so long. I mean, I can't decide if it's a problem or a plus to not be an attorney. I haven't figured that one out yet. Um, Passed the committee with oversight over the organization's finances? Uh, with 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 with, with, uh, with ongoing review of the organization's finances. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I'm just trying to make sure because uh, so oversight of funding is being interpreted as ongoing review of the organization's finances. Does okay. so so that make sense to anybody? <laughs> as, as just Sorry, an example, because I I do better on examples. So to understand, so say somebody decides they want to give money to the organization to help fund something, but they're not doing it as a promissory note or a loan, that they're actually doing a gift to the organization, but they've got a stipulation on it that it only be spent in, say, Calus, then mm -hmm. it would be our responsibility to ensure that set of money went to Calus development, not somewhere else, and That's that we'd had a separate true. bucket for that. Is right. my understanding yeah. that correctly? I mean, I... I think the way it's usually done in a nonprofit is the treasurer or somebody else prepares a, a, a regular report for meetings of the finance committee and or the board, and it would detail stuff like that, you know, balance sheet, revenue that's been coming in since the last report, any stipulations about conditions on gift okay. and whatnot. Mm. Does that, that make sense? Yeah. 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 I, I would want to make sure that... that uh, all the items that are uh, audited are pre-audited in a way yeah. uh, by the finance can make sure that that stuff is actually happening the way it's supposed to. That's why I said on ongoing review because yeah. I, I mean an audit should be relatively easy for an auditor to do if you have all the stuff right. prepared ahead of time for the person. You'll spend a lot less money on it I think too if you mm -hmm. do that, which is really important. So arts can be expensive. Mm -hmm. So. Um, if I leave it at oversight of funding is being interpreted as ongoing review of organizations' finances. The committee's ongoing review. Okay. Does that does that meet everybody? If we take it at least the, that way, if I, you know, we report back out, at least we all know what we're talking about, so mm -hmm. we can explain in more detail. Yeah, because I think too, like as far as. Like if we're working with the development committee, for if they want to go out and they need a letter, you know, that they're trying to get donations, um, they need a letter approved. That's something I think that we would do as a committee. Right. And that would be somewhat under the funding oversight, but more probably under the compliance right. um, as part of our job to make sure that whoever is out there raising money is doing it in accordance with the statutes. And it's actually doing it. Or when there's a <laughs> when there's a grant and they're soliciting a grant, it would be our responsibility for reporting and stating, yes, we have met, you know, like we've been paying our bills. And mm -hmm. this, is, this is proof that we've been paying our bills. Because some grants want to know the financial performance of the organization they're funding. Right. Who pays the bills, I wonder? The treasurer pays the bills. That's right. And until we get money coming into the organization, it's a personal expense, right? <laughs> I can, I can, uh... <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I had other pressing <laughs> I'd be willing to, uh, front, uh, Siobhan, her two, <laughs> two hours apart. Two hours apart. <laughs> so, so, after that, I'm tapped out. <laughs> I just ask one question. We're 501c3 by definition of being a municipal corporation, mm -hmm. is my understanding. Yeah. That... Does that mean that every time there's money given to us, a gift, we have to determine? No, I guess it's the responsibility of the person who wants to take this as a tax deduction to report whether they've got anything in return. It would be on us to provide a correct receipt. Right. So if, yeah. if maybe part of the money was for something that they received. Yeah. 
then it would have to be itemized. So maybe they give us $100, and $50 of that is for... Building a line to their house. Yeah. yeah. Um, then that would be itemized as so that it would be not deductible. Right. And then it would be $50 donation, and, th and that nothing was... You know, there'd be a tagline on there that nothing... Uh, no goods or services were received in. But that would come from us. Right. So in some sense, that's an example of our doing compliance. Right. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, good. That's a, that's a good catch. I shot it with Carol Bonmer the other day, and I think she mentioned that uh, some of those people who early on, you know, put down a thousand dollars or whatever it was, uh, uh, still have not received internet access. <laughs> Boy, talk about generosity. Huh? Yeah. That's really that's <laughs> understanding. <laughs> okay. So. Then the, the last two, just to see if there, there's any questions on them, let's try to get through this pretty quick. So um, bank account research is pretty self-explanatory, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, but, and preparation for audits is, okay, you were about. A, a bank, I yeah. was thinking about a bank account, if we're going to somehow split that up. That, um, that, will um, come, that, that will come as part of the agenda. Yeah, we, I, I think, need to come up with a list of items or questions or data that we're going to so we're all probe. asking the same questions. So that, yeah, we're all asking yeah. the same thing. That, yeah, that'll definitely come up as part of the agenda item. There. Should, should we also be saying bank or credit union account? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, the yeah. bank people will point out a credit union, it's not a bank, right? No, we should just. <laughs> so credit unions will point out that credit unions are banks, too. <laughs> yeah, so, but yeah, so we want to. Financial add, institutions, I think. Yeah, think. financial but, institutions hmm. is better. Financial so I'll just ask them about you know, just making that change, and we can just assume it. Yeah, I, I think everybody would agree we should make some change yes. that reflects our seeking something maybe beyond the bank. From bank account research, so assume change from bank account research to something more expansive. How about financial account research? Right. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So something more expansive that we can get to at the general meeting, and then we'll, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can't just tell them we're changing it. We well, have to ask them if we can change it. I'm, I'm going to tell them we're assuming that thing. change. Yeah, okay. Uh, that, right. That's what I'm just going to say we assume. That's why I put the word assume. There. Oh, okay. Believe me, what I write is what I'm going to tell them. Okay. And um, I, I do not, I try not to use a lot of adverbs and adjectives. So <laughs> if they're there, that's because I intend them to be. Um, so, and then preparation for the audit, I think even if we have no idea what it's about at this point, we don't need to really worry about it, although I think that's self-explanatory at this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we'd have to have funds. Yeah. yeah. Well, I could, listen, I could do our audit right now. Um, <laughs> are you an auditor? <laughs> don't <No. laughs> like We had this audit done by this person. <laughs> well, I got and my, he says we're fine. Yeah, <laughs> like, we're not real. <laughs> you can hear the uh, prosecuting attorney. Right? Okay. So, committee charge, and what I got to pass on is. Oversight of funding is being interpreted as committee ongoing review of organizations' finances. Assume a change from bank account research to something more expansive, financial institutions, etc. And committee is looking for precise guidance on what is meant by compliance and preparation for audits and compliance. Anything else we should be passing on from that? Okay. So moving on then to oversight over funding. Um, so on, on these, so what I did is I, the next three items here, I took the committee charge, those three items, oversight over funding, bank account research, preparation for audits and compliances. I broke them each out into their own agenda item. And uh, at, at this point, I, I guess, you know, whatever discussion we need to have and any, if we have to develop any first steps, and if we have any more specific items, this would be items specifically about oversight of funding, not so much about our charge, but things that might have to do with oversight over funding that we want. Well, I mean, short of probably each of us could grab a monthly report from a treasurer of a nonprofit we work for. Anybody ever wanted examples? I mean, all the nonprofits I work for, somebody has done that. 
Um, so I, I think people will understand that the ongoing review is usually a written report that's submitted for a meeting of the Finance Committee and or the Board. Um, and it will show, you know, balance in the account, revenue, um, liabilities, money paid out. You know, one thing we should do, I, I um, we should, once we get a checkbook and have an account, we should have some sort of internal review of all checks that are written, right? Is that required now, actually, that somebody other than, there has to, there, there have to be two people who essentially approve well, the expenditure? Well, for, for us, we have to have two signers on checks, I want to say over a, maybe it's not a thousand, maybe it's a little um, but th I mean, it kind of depends. So, it, like for us, if we're if it's a loan check or a request from operating funds or something like that, that has to be signed off by two directors, and that doesn't mean board directors; that means staff directors. Mm. Um, and then, um, but like like our phone bill, our bookkeeper just pays that, so that doesn't require. Like additional. Is your bookkeeper separate from your paid staff? Is it somebody you've hired, you've contracted with? No, she's Is staff. She's staff. Okay. Yeah, we have a three-person finance department. Wow. I think I, what I'm remembering is when there was that whole spate of embezzlements within nonprofit organizations. A number of people pointed out you only had one person who had the authority to write a check for you know a thousand dollars, and nobody else looked at it. Yeah, we definitely have more checks and balances than that. Yeah. Um, well, we and I don't know. I think, too, with, actually, now that I think about it, with um, our regular bills, like the phone bill, like the rent, all those kinds of things, Lynn prepares all those payments, but then they're signed off by the executive director. So I don't think there's any transaction that happens here. Which, that's not seen by that's at least two people. That's not seen by at least two people. Yeah. Well, we should try to figure out a system for having the same safeguard, I think. Mm -hmm. That's important. That's, we don't want to even get near the idea. Do, do Things you happen when you look away. Do you have software that you use, yeah. specific software for tracking, like bookkeeping and stuff like that? Yeah. I, I don't know a lot about bookkeeping yes. software. Um, I am not um, on the finance department, <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, yes, yeah, I'm trying to remember what the name of it is. It's but QuickBooks? No, no, it's something different. Um, but it, it also, so it interfaces with our loan management software and mm -hmm. all that. And like, oh, yeah. we're pretty complex yeah. here. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but I would imagine that QuickBooks or I know, like, Sage is a popular one for nonprofits. Um, there are a couple others for nonprofits that I haven't. Um, there's also a separate QuickBooks for nonprofits. Oh, there is? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a separate version, so. Yeah, I'll have to figure something out. Get a, maybe a list to look at or something. Because mm -hmm. we probably want to have, like, I mean, we can't really buy it until money's come in. <laughs> we kind of want to have it for when the money comes in. Well, if we are, and this is one area where I'm not totally familiar yet. Um, so is everything the same as it would be for a 501c3 with us as a communications union district? I, I think so. Okay. Because one of the things that we can do, too, is um, we can get a TechSoup account. I just <laughs> that would be really good. Um, and they have, so they offer, they basically manage donations or okay. discounts from a bunch of different software providers. Very cool. Um, mm -hmm. And so you just apply and then you can get, you know, like Microsoft Office for, you know, 20 bucks a year per user or something mm -hmm. like that. Pennies on a dollar. Yeah, it's really mm -hmm. good. So is TechSoup two different words? Or? It's one word. Very with modern. A capital with S the S though. capitalized. Right. Very <laughs> modern. <laughs> All right, I'm assuming they spelled soup correctly. <laughs> yes. And it's, um, not, it's not a dollar sign. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and so all we would need to do for that, that's where I would, I would just have to do a little research on what they need, because usually what TechSoup needs is your letter from the IRS saying mm -hmm. that you're a 501c3, and I don't know that they 
I mean, it would probably just be our certificate from the. You know, they might not let, let government entities. Oh, okay. You know, I've never yeah. applied through a government entity for it, but it's worth a try. Yeah. See what they say. Yeah, the worst they can do is say no. Yeah. And then we plead poverty, and which <laughs> <laughs> is true. <clears throat> well, I know, I'll, I'll tell you, in some of these, because having experience with doing a little more of a hack job on bookkeeping for a nonprofit than in Williamstown Food Shelf, right? I was just picked off the streets to be their treasurer, and this was even before we became our own nonprofit, simply because I was one I could knew how to balance a checkbook. Or, you know, I mean, that's what they were looking for. And at first, that's all we needed, but as time is going on, and then people have asked for a little more um, detailed bookkeeping that I, I was using, I, I've been using um, GNU Cash, which it, it's, you know, it's, it's open software solution, and it works well for what it's advertised for working, and it works as advertised. It just isn't, you know, it, it's all oh, that. It, it's just not the adequate solution for what's needed, I can mm -hmm. tell you right now, so we really should look. Mm -hmm. I, I know having researched for the food shelf some of these other options that they offer right out of the box, you know, full setups with full support as far mm -hmm. as how to set things up. And you're not left with somebody like me sitting there guessing how <laughs> to set up an account system. Yeah, and then not setting it up very well and then having to redo it. And Yeah, but as long as I'm the only one looking at it, I can redo it to my heart's content. The scary part is someday I'm going to have to hand it off to somebody, mm -hmm. and they're in trouble. <laughs> Yeah. You know, it might be worth it asking Irv Tomei what they've done down at EC mm -hmm. Fiber. I, do, you, do you have a way of contacting him? Or? I don't, but I probably can get I'm that from somebody. Somewhere. Let me see. Because they, they must have figured this out. Right? Mm -hmm. I think, so we used uh, QuickBook for non, QuickBooks for nonprofit when I was the executive director of a much smaller nonprofit in Iowa. And I think certainly... At least at this stage, it would be plenty. That would be plenty robust for what we need right now, or, you know, for the next year or so at least. Um, you can set up all your vendor accounts. So if we have, you know, like regular bills, <clears throat> um, you can set that all up in your chart of accounts and that kind of stuff. But same, you know, like when I was a treasurer for a much smaller nonprofit. Um, that basically we were just doing, you know, four or five things. I just did that in Excel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and right. even so. in QuickBooks is popular enough and well known enough that even if we end up moving to something else, transferring from QuickBooks yeah. to something mm -hmm. else should be Probably. comparatively painless. Right. If we have to expand at some point. <clears throat> I have a question about this bank account business. Okay. I think we're next one. Next. Hold on to that. That's okay. the next agenda item. Okay. We are coming up. Bank account research is number seven. Okay. I want to make sure we get through this one first. Yep. Here we're still trying to talk specifically about oversight over the funding. Right. Right. So uh, right now what I have to take forward is to let them know is policy. We need to develop some policies and, and procedures procedure. for financial checks and balances, right? Mm-hmm. I put process. I should put procedures. Is that in. us or is that the policy committee? Huh. Well, that that's a good question. I, I think we should probably, but uh, we need. I'll yeah, put, we could suggest. We could make some suggestions, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'd be great if they would do it, but I'm not sure we really. That's the best way to do it. Nah. We might end up with some really weird policy. Right. Be, being a member of the policy committee. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think it's important that it, it be kind of coordinated in the sense that we don't want to develop a policy that's going to contradict something that gets created in the policy or bylaws. That, it just doesn't make sense, you right. know, because people aren't as familiar with. I mean, you, you two probably know as much about finances, any of us, and it's got to be more than the other people in the policy committee. I, mean, I don't think there's any really, you know. Oh, no, you, you have the superintendent there. Well, Jim Bar, yeah. And, and Jim Barlow sort of knows some of this just by being an attorney who worked for the League of Cities and Towns. But still, it would be better for yeah. us to think this through, I think. Mm -hmm. So that we, we, could, we could develop, the, we could be given the policies with input from us, and we could develop the procedures for implementing this. Mm -hmm. 
So, okay, I'll put that suggestion in there. Policy and bylaws develops policy. And we can, you know, bar, I can certainly Find bring it. some templates and samples and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, one advantage of yeah. being here is that we do have investors here in addition to grantees, or grantors. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we do all of that kind of stuff. So, And we do our investments as promissory notes. So, um, And I, I've been... For the better part of the last decade, I've been involved in just this sort of a process. We, first, it was the Orange North Supervisory Union in the Williamstown School District. Now it's because of the mergers, the Central Vermont Supervisory Union and Payne Mountain School District. So mm -hmm. this contact, we actually go to three people, and it's something I really push very hard at. That we have, So we have a bookkeeper that's entered. Well, actually, the bills get okayed by the business manager, in mm -hmm. some cases a superintendent, I will not let the business manager sign off for himself, but so the bills get okayed by the business manager, they get entered into the, the, the uh, warrants get created by the bookkeeper, and then a board member, and it's usually has been me, sent by choice actually, because I really get interested in this stuff, goes through, and but I'm not really there to question the bills as much to make sure there's a bill there's a corresponding charge, right? Mm -hmm. Or there's a charge, there's a corresponding bill to make. Sometimes I look at the bills too, but that's more out of personal interest. My job in that part is not really to okay the bills. They've been okay. Mm -hmm. My job is to make sure that what's reflected in that warrant list and the bills lit pile are the same. And then they go, in the case of the school district, they actually goes down to the town treasurer who signs the checks, and in the case of the uh, Central Vermont Supervisory Union, the warrants then go to another board member who signs the checks, so that we end up with a minimum of three people mm -hmm. involved. But you know, we did we did too for a while there. I was I was doing that final check on the warrants and signing the checks for the supervisory union, but I really I, yeah, I, I no fought good. against that. But it's just we didn't have people to do it. You know, it was an absolute, but it's not a good way. And I, I tell you, when it comes. The reason I, I like to talk about the school districts on that, when Salmon was still the auditor, he did a state, he, he went out and did an audit of school districts. I, my feeling was he was expecting to find all sorts of waste and fraud in the system. And he came back that over a 10 year period, it was like something, I calculated it out to be like a 0.00003% waste and fraud. And that's because just about all supervisory unions, just about all school districts have multiple people involved. You know, you don't have the same person saying, oh, yeah, I can write this check. It's okay. Yep, and let me sign it. You know, so, yeah, it's, it's actually quite rare when you see a school district get in trouble. And I think it does have a lot to do with the number of eyes that we have on bills. Yeah, I think it's smaller nonprofits with with a limited number of people involved in the operation yeah. that mm -hmm. have the problems. And I mean, the thing that I've mm -hmm. been thinking about is the way that Irv described how they set up their revenue coming in and how they were expending it was a, was a little bit complicated for mm -hmm. for who for who they were. I mean, they they were getting money in different ways, including promissory notes and essentially bonds, and they were you know, redeeming bonds early and, and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. And then they had contractors who were actually providing the labor they needed to build the system. And it just sounded, it got complicated pretty quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's yeah. better to have more oversight than less oversight. Mm -hmm. but, but without being cumbersome, I mean, we have to mm -hmm. trust a contractor, I think. Yeah. So anything else anybody wants to, anything else I should put in to bring forward to the board for oversight of funding, very specifically? Hey, we still a have I a few more minutes on that. Do you, do you guys have insurance? Do you have to get hmm. liability insurance? <coughs> For yes, community? I think so. I mean, I assume so. Are we going to have to do that for this communications union district? Once we... S uh, I would think the contractor would carry for the, yeah, for the installation and the, and the workers who are doing the installation. Uh -huh. I don't know what our they liability would be. Would be as, themselves. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Making sh We would need to make sure that they were bonded and insured. Right. We need to figure out what the lines of responsibility yeah. are in all right. that. Right, yeah, because I think in that sense, this is this is different than what I would think of as a nonprofit. So, like, 
our liability insurance is well i mean we have things like coverage for if people are you know driving in their cars for work purposes and that kind of stuff um and then we also have dno so directors and officers insurance mm -hmm. um i don't know that we have liability insurance beyond that um i don't know that i don't I don't know what else we would need it for, really, for what we do here. Um, I mean, there are enough things that we have to do correctly because of what we do in terms of the lending and... Mm -hmm. There are and regulations in place. Right, yeah, but we don't have insurance for those. And then we have employer's insurance right. um, beyond workers' comp, so... Um, employment practices and and those kinds of things. So which would kick in if we get staff, right? And we're when not contract we staff. Hmm. If we're not Assuming contracting we everything out, enough. right? So where staff. in all those three different charges, where would insurance fall under if we were going to ask that question? I would think it would be compliance, yeah. okay. as far, because it's it's making sure that you're operating legally and that you're. I'll put a note in there just for us anyway. I mean, I think it's, yeah, it's kind of two different questions. Like, do we need to be insured? What what insurance do we need to have, if any, as the kind of body that we are? And then is there any other insurance that we would want to have beyond that? Okay. So I don't want to skip ahead too far here. So getting back to the oversight over funding here, anything else here? So what I have to bring forward, we need policies and procedures for financial checks and balances. Um, policy and bylaws develops policy, finance develops procedures. That's just our suggestion. Bookkeeping software, Sage, Quick, I just wrote down what we mm. gave for the example, Sage, QuickBooks, TechSoup. What has EC Fiber or others done? Other anything else? And we're uh, so okay. Used up about our twenty minutes on that one. So twenty minutes now for bank account research. Financial institution account research. <laughs> right. right. Here we go. First, before I uh, let me just type in here so I can keep track of the timing that we got. Okay, so so I, I guess so. Okay, so first let let's let me miss make note of that bit about that we begin at fine should be right financial or a nonprofit institution research. If I can spell institution right, and then. Uh, so, Becca, if I could, because you circulated the email, I'm thinking about how to divide the stuff up. If you've had any more thoughts about it, about what you and what you were thinking. Um. Well, I think you know certainly we can look at like a TD or something like that, but I would think we would start with institutions that have that are, are located within the region that we serve. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe somewhat don't necessarily go beyond that a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Although I, there I are certainly that, statewide things that are, that could be useful, but um, you know, I think just for, for practical purposes, for one, um, if you're talking about, you know, when we're starting out, Treasurer is going to be a volunteer position. They're going to be having to make, you know, going physically to make deposits and those kinds of things. I want to bring something up about that, but later, because this isn't a particular time, but just so you're aware of it, I'm going to ask you to actually stuff away the tape from the table for the moment. You can stay in the room <laughs> because I am going to seriously suggest that we bring forward to the board the possibility of trying to find 
some money up front so that we can pay a treasurer when we huh. have a treasurer because I get, to, but we, we'll go into that later. So I just, just so you understand what I'm saying there, right. I don't want to yeah. like. And I'm not the treasurer yet. That's right. <laughs> but because it does involve it possible you. It might be a contested election. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as we mention money, yeah, all of a but sudden. But I have, I have turned in my resignation as the second alternate. Right. <laughs> and, and, it's hard. Well, it's really hard. hard. <laughs> okay. So, so but I, so I, I just mentioned mm -hmm. because of what you said there is, is I, so I, you know, I think we need to talk about that one. Yeah. So what but, kind of, where will we put the limits on institutions that we'll look at? So like TD is like a federal, there's, they're all over the place. Right. Mm -hmm. So that that's kind of an obvious one, but is say, the, the, is it Union? It's Union Bank. Union Bank. It's not Morrisville, actually. Right, so. yeah. So that, is that within our region that we serve? I or? would, they I have would an, say They have an office right. in Barry in the Barry Montpelier Road. Right, they just put mm -hmm. it in. Just put, just it, put in. it in. Um, there's the Federal Credit Union. New England Federal Credit. Right, yeah. And one's Credit Union now, because they're, they're um, taken over by that credit union now that is based out of Lebanon, New Hampshire, but... Do they, yes. they have an office yes, right up in East Barry. We've been using them for 20 some odd years now. What are now, the edge apparently. cases on that? Where, mm -hmm. do we, where do we go with that? That's, or well, do we care? I mean, well, I think too, like we, know like we, we don't it. want, I don't think we're necessarily obligated to find information from every single possible institution that might qualify either. I mean, okay. I think if you, because we're, I mean, we are looking at, I think we're looking at two purposes here in doing this research. One is that we want to find an institution that has an affinity for, you know, local organizations, local economic development, Vermont e values, those kinds of things, and then also straight up costs comparison. Would that be correct? Uh -oh. I'm hoping that there's people that have more experience at higher levels of nonprofit finances than me that can give some guidance as to what questions I would walk in and ask. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I have some general ones that I know to ask, such as how much would it cost? <laughs> you know, what kind of services do you provide? But mm -hmm. I don't know if there's specific questions we need to ask walking in. I have, when I opened the Williamstown Food Shelf account, I walked in and opened the checking account. Mm -hmm. And it was just a simple basic checking account they gave us. You know, I think we get free checking or something. You know, it's not even because we're nonprofit. It's just their standard checking. So that's, that's as far as. That's Northfield Savings Bank. No, that said, what is now Lake Sunapee? It's they've got a branch oh, in Williamstown yeah. mm -hmm. there, okay. which also is another. I mean, is right. that considered you know serving our area? Right. What What was it called before? Did you say? What was it before? You said it was in East Barry or Barry or something? Oh, that's the credit union. There, it, it is now called One Credit Union. Uh, it yes. was called, I forget what the name of, I, I can't even remember. I was just a member of it for so long. That I, okay, well. But it yeah, was I, in East Barry, and, and they, they merged with the credit union over in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, I've been a member of VCQ since we moved here in 93, so I don't have, you know, I've got some very limited experience with some other banks. One of the things that I was thinking is it would be nice if they had a decent online banking presence mm -hmm. so yeah. that it kind of is supporting mm -hmm. kind of what we're talking about here. <laughs> That's <laughs> so, true. No, you have to go to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, I know we... Uh, the Here at VCLF, we that. use Peoples for most things. Um, they they have a special they have special rates for nonprofits. Um, <laughs> then personally, we're members of the uh, VSCCU also, and we have our mortgage through Northfield because we bought our land before we moved here, so we couldn't be members of the SCCU. <laughs> so, um, although we've been very happy with them, you know. Uh, for our personal stuff. And the other thing, too, is that we don't have to do, I mean, our main checking and savings should be at the same place, but then once we get into, you know, looking at CDs or you can go anywhere, right. um, you don't have to have everything all in one place. And in fact, you know, once we get over the FDIC insured amount, you, you don't want everything in one place because right. yeah, you hit the... Sure. Well, you're getting you optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. my, my comment about this was 
was that we think about checking accounts. Mm -hmm. This is really about more than checking accounts. Um, you know, the, uh, eventually we may want a credit card. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I get stuff at Amazon, it goes on my credit card. I don't send Amazon a check. Um, right. uh, and the other thing that occurs to me is that um, we're going to some lengths to find a local uh, financial uh, institution that we feel we can work with. Um, is CDI going to institute the same kind of policy, same kind of thinking with respect to buying things? Mm. Um, and in a way, pur purchases uh, have a much bigger impact mm -hmm. on profitability, th I think, than, who, than a banking relationship. So how should... And, and is, is the Finance Committee supposed to... The kind of a guiding policy that we try to yeah. stick local... Or again, it seems fair that we do that. We're asking people to buy local from us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seems appropriate to keep the money in the community. Can I ask you, you, you I, I think Becca mentioned fiduciary responsibility, or did you mention fiduciary? I said the word fiduciary. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, how does a nonprofit deal with fiduciary responsibility when hmm. you're not trying to look just at the bottom line, but you're, you're trying to do what Bob just suggested, which is to favor, say, the local economy? Hmm. Does that run counter to what your fight? fiduciary responsibility is as I say a board it can I suppose if it costs you more right to do it that way right I know from the legal standpoint I think it's okay to some degree that you, you can you, you don't always for instance when when you're on a municipality you don't always have to take one of the lowest bidders but you have to be within range of the lowest bidder and you have you generally need to have some decent reason. I know we have, in the school district in Williamstown, we, we've occasionally have picked something that's slightly more expensive because they're a local vendor mm -hmm. over somebody that wasn't. Seems like we could, as, as a matter of policy, as, as our, within our financial arena, is set a kind of rule of thumb as guidance, not as a, this is what you'll do, but as a, as, a, as a guidance of, say, if the local option is, say, 25% or more higher than this other option, we need to review it or something like that. But otherwise, you know, within a price range of, because most of the stuff we're probably going to, you know, a REMA paper, I don't think we're going to go pricing a, around a lot, but mm -hmm. some of the stuff that we might end up having to obtain, we'd probably price it before we bought it. Mm -hmm. And and so it shouldn't be too complicated to try and meet just a guideline so that we're, we're owning that. We have a local responsibility, but we also have this fiduciary responsibility to not overspend because, to spend responsibly because we want the, the organization to remain um, afloat. Mm -hmm. And we are in a competitive situation. Right. Mm -hmm. in some areas. Right. So and so, so like, mm -hmm. you know, we may not be able to hire a local ISP to roll out wire on the roads okay. because who, who, who will we get? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I think at this but, point we're getting a little far afield from the financial institutions. By the way, <laughs> this is what I meant that I can, be a, I, I can be a bit of a pain mm -hmm. in the ass on this, but otherwise mm -hmm. we're smart people and there's a lot of stuff we could talk about all day long. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I just worry about some stuff like this because you can really get into very long discussions. Yeah, I mean they go on forever. <laughs> well, this yeah. is why I would start with the you know discussing it and start yeah. the questions. Mm -hmm. We start the the best thing about discussion I have found in these committees is we get a feel for what people are what we're each thinking and what's possible mm -hmm. to move forward as a group mm -hmm. with. Um, so what what I put down there for that was how should policy regarding choosing fine uh, financial institutions work in conjunction. <clears throat> with policy regarding other service and product purchases. I also have the should be financial institution research in quotes mm -hmm. there. We'll make sure we bring that that seems to be something we need to do. And, and I think that's a good question to take back to the, the board right. as a whole is yeah. is that balance of do we you know, do we want to be 
looking at things on straight cost, or do we want to prioritize local and to yeah. what extent? Mm -hmm. And it's a good place. You know, the banks would know financial institution would be a good place for us to stretch our legs in and see how it fits mm -hmm. our vision. You mm -hmm. know, it could be <laughs> CUD's vision. So uh, so we should start now. I, I don't know if I should keep this in, but start with institutions that serve our region. Should I leave that in there? It's something to bring forward? I believe so, yes. I think so. I mean, serve our region really yeah. kind of leaves it open. Cause That's pretty light. Yeah. And then, I, this is a real short list. I was just getting the conversation. Things to look for. And, and by the way, at this at this moment, we still have another almost 10 minutes to spend on this. So if there's more. So things to look for. Online access, special rates for nonprofits, primary checking and savings should be in the same bank, not necessary for investments, et cetera. Uh, credit debit card availability. Anything else that should be thrown in there right now? I mean, this doesn't have to be the end all, mm -hmm. but if we're going to plan on, I guess my next question is, are we planning on leaving here with each of us with, with our own, with a mini charge from the committee to go out and do some research on this? I think we need a list of questions first. I don't okay. think we're quite ready to talk to the institutions yet because we haven't agreed on what are we going to ask them, and I think we need to ask them all the same question because otherwise we'll mm -hmm. come and be like, you'll do this one and you do that one, and they're like, oh, well, I should have asked that question. <laughs> yeah, we really should have a, a good list of questions. Okay. So maybe then what to give us time on that, so rather than sit here and just spend a lot of time trying to think up questions, if you guys sit down, spend a few minutes some point thinking about this and say, geez, you know, I just thought it would, send me an email. Mm -hmm. And I'll just keep I'll just keep tagging on and, and have a list compiled that, you know, will come forward at the board of whatever anybody sends me. You know, I'm mm -hmm. not going to filter it or anything, so be careful. So we'll have the board look at it. And they can say, no, don't ask that question. Yes, ask that question. Or, or suggest that another question. question. Or suggest yeah. another question. Or I, might, I, I like that, I like yeah. that idea. Because then we're getting information that some of them, because you know, I don't necessarily think like the rest of them. Yeah. And so we're at least getting some, if we give them examples, it may encourage them to think of other things that we haven't thought of. Yeah. Well, it gives us feedback, and, and I, actually, I hadn't thought about it in those terms, but I think that's an excellent point. I, my primary, my initial reasoning on doing this and making sure we bring some stuff forward is so they understand what we're thinking, mm -hmm. you know? But, but yeah, I, I think, you know, in the avenue of two-way thinking that it works. So do we want to move on from bank account research, or does anybody have anything else to add to that at the moment? Okay. I'm good. And also along with the list of things to look for, if you think of specific institutions that you think would be good, mm -hmm. you know, good starting places, send those along too. I'll build those up. We're, we're back from recess now, so that's good. That, that only took us a minute off. So we're actually still within schedule at, at the 90-minute uh, meeting here. So we're on to now. This is preparations for audits and compliance. And I did already include about what type, what about insurance, what types, when do we need it, et cetera. So that's already here. I um, just had wrote, written some notes, and this is where I had how to approach subject of salary for CUD treasurer. However, I hmm. think that should be moved. I'm going to move that down and bring it up under the committee roundtable because it, it will... I, I just want to make sure we have everybody to discuss audits and compliance here, and I don't want to chase anybody away from the table <laughs> at this moment. So um, so this is where we kind of need to review 30 VSA 3070, 3074, and 3075. These are all parts of the CUD law. There are other parts that deal with finances, and as Bob was very kind to point out, that you know, we actually have work something defining work for us, right? Yeah. And so 3075 is the budget. That's where the bulk of the work comes out. 3074 deals with our fiscal year, which unfortunately mm. does set it at January 1st through December 31st. And uh, 3070 just talks about the audit, which is, I think, at this point, the least pressing bit of business for us. Because even if we 
have it in order to do, it wouldn't be done until, well, 2020 at this point, right? The spring of 2020, because we'd have to get through 2019 to have anything auditable. Yeah, one year, that's horrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so that the audit requirement starts out once the district becomes operational. Mm -hmm. Are we now operational? Do you know, or is does it, it, are we operational only after we can start? Taking it and spending money. That's a good, good question. question. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What's the difference between organiz you know, date of organization right. versus date mm -hmm. of operation? Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that they say something like that <clears throat> suggests to me it's when you aren't doing what we're doing now, which is planning how to run things. It's when you actually right, get up and running. You can't really audit. Yeah, I, mean, I would call it the, the production discussions. deploy. <laughs> <laughs> This is development and testing. We're not we're not in production yet. Yeah, maybe we can just say that our understanding of the audit is we're not really operational to the point of an audit being necessary for fiscal for twenty eighteen. Is everybody comfortable? With I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable with that. I don't know what else we do. Yeah. Well, is, is there a point at which we report to the towns or uh, which we supply the audit to the towns? Is that defined? Not to towns, is it? It's the budget is, but I would think we'd be foolish not to because we're dealing with select boards and city yeah, councils right, and right. that are all used to seeing them and probably having a built-in expectation of one. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think in 30, the only thing that I remember seeing that we're required to present are, are, are the, um, the initial estimate of budget. That's the October report. Mm -hmm. And then... At some point, we have to present an actual budget. We're supposed to have a public hearing and present an actual budget, right? It says, together with a financial statement, a proposed district budget for the next fiscal mm -hmm. year, and a forecast presenting anticipated year-end results. And I don't know if they mean year-end of the current fiscal year or the next fiscal year. It's kind of badly worded. And then it has... It would have to be the, the next fiscal year because you can't forecast the current fiscal year because you're doing it. Right, but you can have well, a forecasted end of year balance. Right, mm -hmm. balance. right. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. no one talks. The other point I want to make about this is is that at least in the, well, the nonprofits I've known about, uh, there was an, a narrative that went along with the budget mm -hmm. that would say, for example, you know, revenues are at, you know, seventy five percent of uh, our year end uh, number. We expect mm -hmm. to make that number because. Here's what happens with revenues, and in December, December takes a jump. Um, <clears throat> so that's the con it's a combination of, you know, a narrative plus e explaining plus an estimate. Mm -hmm. And then there is um, coincident with a regular meeting or other board should hold a public hearing on or before November fifteenth of each year to receive comments from right. legislative bodies of district members, and hear all other interested persons regarding the proposed budget. Yeah. At least we only have to hold one public hearing. <laughs> yeah. We have to give notice of such hearing to the legislative bodies of district members at least 15 days prior to such hearing. Mm -hmm. The board shall give consideration to all comments received and make such changes to the proposed budget as it deems advisable. And then the budget has to the board has to adopt the budget by December 15th. That seems kind of mm -hmm. mean. We're like most of the select boards meet the first. Like we give them month, so we're giving them November fifteenth. We're saying, okay, we're having this meeting, and then they, you you have two weeks to get this decided on, and get your comments back to us. That's their problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, if you think about it, though, if we do our job, because we're we're actually this is in a way, some ways it's a little bit different in hmm. that we're. I I am sitting on a board, and this is the first time I'm on a board where I'm representing another board. In other words, you know, I serve at the Williamstown Select Board's um, mm -hmm. pleasure. Yeah. So I'm, I'm representing them and presumably Williamstown through them. This is yeah. as opposed to being on the school board where I'm directly, you know, I'm just accountable to the voters. They're the only ones that can boot me out of office mm -hmm. at a certain point. So that has uh, kind of colored my thinking on it and that, you know, we, we do need to I, I my approach has been to talk to, to talk to the Williamstown Select Board and to set up a, just a 
time where so that we'll have a steady steady give and take on it so that <laughs> as these things come up hopefully short of emergencies or you know things that you know, unexpected circumstances that at least people have some awareness of what's coming on the road so yeah. that if they see a budget of you know what's 25 million dollars they're not going to be totally surprised because I've been telling them well, we're looking at somewhere between 20 and 30 million mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. well and I think plus the fact that we're not asking for town funds mm -hmm. yeah, yeah I was it takes some of the you know I mean the, not that they're going to rubber stamp it but it, it gives them an opportunity to you know they're weighing in philosophically more than financially I think yeah Yeah, it would be odd if they would have control over our finances when we cannot get any of our financial <laughs> backing from them. Yes. You know, it's a little bit. But I, I guess they're representing the people in our districts, right. the select board, so yeah. that's legitimate. Hmm. Yeah, I was kind of curious as to why they have such a tight connection. I guess they were thinking along the lines of these regional um, waste disposal. And, mm -hmm. uh, the, <laughs> You know, the environmental, the, the Act mm -hmm. 250 process is all based on regional things. Those yeah. are all things, uh, regional planning, et cetera. Those are all select board appointment based. Mm -hmm. Well, and maybe to just, you know, protecting people. Like when you look what just happened with the, what was it called? Coverage, something coverage, the rural cell phone coverage. Oh, right, yeah. So uh, let me, uh, 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 we, I guess our, a, a question I, I think we should ask, and I don't know, or maybe we should just make a statement that we're going to, but our something you, you had mentioned when we were sitting down over at Bob's place down there, that um, should we be asking, do they want us to prepare an October report this time around? No, I think uh, Jeremy said yeah. he was taking that on this time around, mm -hmm. that he was going to prepare the report for the select boards. Yeah. I do remember that, yes. I do remember and I suppose that. if uh, uh, we care, we could make sure that Jeremy says something about financial, st financial statement, budget, forecast, et cetera, if, if it's best mentioned in that report, in his report, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so that we don't have to it's do it separately. Process. Yeah. I'm sure any reporting we want to do is and another related issue too which is that uh, it's a little awkward now <laughs> because we're just getting started but at some point uh, this uh, organization should have um, a, a schedule of its own that, that says okay budgets are due to yeah, select them yeah, in yeah, October yeah. 21st therefore the board needs to start discussing yeah. budgets in Pick a date, yeah, yeah. Um, and <clears throat> and then the finance committee needs to do X, Y, or Z, um, just so that we are on top of it next time. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point. And with auditing too, and then we we don't need to do a nine ninety like other nonprofits do, right? No, nobody's being paid, are they? No. So. Well, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we should just not pay anybody for anything. I mean, because uh, we're, we're, yeah, as far as the taxing and, uh, you know, payrolls, all that stuff, that reporting, whether it's by, because I, I don't think if we hire, if we appoint a treasurer and pay a treasurer, it wouldn't be on a 990, you'd get it, uh, the 1040, or not the 1040, the W-2, rather. Right, so the 990 is what the nonprofit turns in. Oh, oh, oh. In lieu of a t that's like okay, your tax, right. your, a nonprofit's tax return. That's right, yeah. Is the 990 that lists, you know, your, your board and. I bet um, they must. I've, I've seen tax notices at the school districts for it before. Well, that's a so good like question then. Towns? Does a school turn yeah. in or a town turn in a 990? Yeah. Hmm. That's a good, we could just yeah. ask a town clerk, I guess. We don't want to ask the town. <laughs> We're not doing something. <laughs> that is a good question. Well, I'm going to put for town clerk to, on that. I would, now, why the town clerk? Who, who would we ask about that? that who would be a good one? Well, there are treasuries. Treasurers, if... Um, I know. I'm going to ask. I, I'm going to ask Crystal Carano, our business manager. 
because yeah, I, I, he he would he knows this stuff really well, and he's you know he's used to working on a big nonprofit <coughs> and with employees, lots of. Mm -hmm. You know the other thing I'm doing I'm I'm making a list of things I could ask Irv Tomei about, and I can just ask him if PC Fiber has ever filed a 990. See okay. what he says. Mm -hmm. I I know Irv a little bit, and I could you know, I could go through a bunch of these things with him. <laughs> right. Does everybody still have internet? No, actually, I've, <laughs> I've been losing it and it's coming back, so he's been. Uh, that's, uh, stuff. that's Anthony, so. Thanks, <laughs> Maybe his fault. So, what I've got to this point, I'm trying to wrap up this section by mm. 310, which is right now. <laughs> so, what I've got here at the moment for preparation for audits and compliance. Our understanding of the audit is one isn't due until 2020 after FY19. What about insurance? What types? When do we need it? Include narrative in October budget report and proposed budget. Make sure any reporting we want to do is included with report Hansen has, has said he'd do, the October report. Board and finance committee schedules must reflect necessary dates. And I should get a little more expansive on that. I uh, would you, I'll just bet you that when uh, I used to work for the Nature Conservancy, and when we when we would be the subject of an audit, they would look not just at uh, you know financials, but they would you know want to know that oh, you know everybody's using their assigned vacation time that travel vouchers are signed off on by supervisors, you know, blah, blah, blah. Basically, they looked at all the policies that, right, that stand right. behind the, not just the financials, but running the organization. And we need to be clear about uh, uh, whether it'd be useful to know whether when we say audit, we're talking about an audit, a financial audit, financial audit or an audit of the whole kid and caboodle. Right. Well, maybe I'll, what I'm going to do, too, yeah, I, I'm going to just send a general email to the state treasurer's office and see if they have any guidance to offer on that, you know, as far as to say, yeah, this is a checklist of things you need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great idea. Yeah, because I know, you know, they have both the, I'm pretty sure the treasurer's office and the um, Secretary, of state. Secretary of State and the Attorney General all have kind of, you know, guides for nonprofits and that kind of stuff, mm. but I don't know, mm. you know, because we're weird. <laughs> um, I don't know if we, you know, we definitely follow all the, you know, because we're a municipality, we're, mm. we function like a municipality, but we also function like a nonprofit, and it's just kind of, yeah. um, I don't know if there's specific guidance out there for exactly what we are. You know who might be it's able to different. help is Jim Barlow and ask right. the LCT because mm -hmm. we're yeah. essentially like a city or a town. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, we're not allowed to be a co-op. Right? We don't like the word co-op, cooperative. I mean, we are a communications union district, so. I don't know if that, it, that's a different thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's attached to statutory creation. Cool. But if then. <laughs> I mean, you can act like a co-op, but te <laughs> technically we're a cud. <laughs> co <laughs> <laughs> well, if you hadn't said it, I would have. So. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to beat you to it. <laughs> <clears throat> So I added in there, then contact state treasurer. So I now take care of this one. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just, it's going to be simple. I'm going to start with just sending them an email. But to uh, contact state treasurer's office, secretary of state's office, and the attorney general's office regarding guidance on tax and other filings required. Required of a CUD. I just love it that we get to sit in Vermont and Chew our cut. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Somebody, anybody wants in there, or any other comments before we move on? What does the U stand for? Union. 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 It's yes. Okay. So community. Communications. Communication. 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 Union. Sorry. Union district. District. That's all right. It took me a while too. I had to see it in a number of times. I kept saying community too. Okay, so if we could just, uh, so we're, we're at quarter after here, so let's get out of here in no more than 15 minutes, maybe a little less. 
So future meeting dates and locations, mostly what I'm interested in here is just do you guys have preferences? I, I, 90 minutes seems to be a preference. Is that right? If possible. Okay. Yeah, we can do it. Yeah, no, I, I understand if possible is always there and anything I say. But if it, <laughs> I'm the type, I'll sit there for hours. So, you know. <laughs> so 90 minutes is preferred. Uh, any specific locations? I was thinking it'd be kind of neat if we could. I mean, there's five of us here. Um, are we each from different communities? No, Mom we have two East Montpelier. Oh, well, we're from four different communities. You know, I mean, it'd, it'd be kind of fun if we if we had the opportunity to kind of move them around. Uh, I know in Williamstown, it'd be easy. I would either could I definitely make use of either the person uh, the. Uh, what do they call it? The uh, public safety building. You know, it's the fire department ambulance. You've got to call it public safety. We put in a little room for the sheriffs to use, <laughs> which made it a public safety building, which made a like a couple million dollars worth of federal money available to help build the structure, and and of course up to schools. And the schools have some really great places to go to be able to have a comfortable meeting. <laughs> The Orange Town Hall is nice, but it's kind of out of the way from everybody else. That's a hike, That's especially in bad weather, right? Yeah. Up over the hill. But so, I, I mean, if I'm not, I'm fine going. Central Point, it seems to be Montpelier. Yeah, I work in Montpelier, mm -hmm. so and you work in Montpelier. I don't know where y'all work. You're in I try not to work, but I, I, <laughs> I live and I work in Williamstown. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah so. I'm, I'm retired, but I'm, if I hang out anywhere, it's here in Montpelier. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if Montpelier so. seems good, and there are locations, I mean, obviously here, but there's also the library, there's yeah, the yeah. schools. You know, are and, we allowed to use National Life State offices? I'm sure state they have offices? space available. I can grab them, because that's where, that's where I work. Yeah. Is that yeah. Um, yeah. State office and yeah, National I, Life. I'm sure. I, I I know they have spaces they make available for public meetings up there. I don't know what the rules are. I don't either. But mm -hmm. is, this, is this space? Is it okay to use the space, or is it mm -hmm. a pain for you to have to arrange that? And stuff? No, I asked Will, and he's fine. And I we all have access to um, our conference room schedule, and so I mean there are certain times it's not heavily utilized. So uh -huh. um, unless and until we get to a point where We've got people. We've got people. Yeah. Um, you know, large public interest or the committee gets a lot larger or whatever. Um, obviously, this is a little bit limited space. Well, we, we could... Other if, than that, it's... If we focus on the general location then and, and the days and the times that are best, and then the, especially in Montpelier, if we're focusing on Montpelier as being the general location, there's enough meeting spaces that we can find a place to mm -hmm. meet our meeting. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So yeah, I can grab pretty much anything at National Life if I've got notice. Okay. Okay. So I know ninety minutes is preferred. Uh, days of the week, are there any preferences? I can tell you right now, Wednesdays, right now, basically, I think the second Wednesday of the month is about the only Wednesday. Uh, the second Tuesday wouldn't be good for any of us. Tuesdays are generally bad for me. Okay. Just and, and what time of day are we talking about? Well, we, you, <laughs> that, that too, along with the days. That's, that's going to be a little tricky for me because we have one car. Okay. We work until 4.30, mm -hmm. and then I have to get my husband home in Orange, and then I can go out. And so, wow. you know, I'm usually, I get home to Orange about 5-ish. But you don't want to have to take your husband home and then come back here. Oh, well, I do that all the time. That's really, wow, that's a schlep. <laughs> I'm electric car. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah. It's, it's like 25 minutes. It's not that bad. So, are, are, it, are other people okay with evening meetings? I prefer evening meetings because otherwise I have to take leave time. Yeah. And, and that's yeah. that's a hardship on me because we have chronic health stuff, and so I'm always short on leave. But I could make leave time work if I had to. Especially if we were up at National Life, mm -hmm. we could just schedule this meeting. <laughs> so do we? Well, that, that might wait. Be that just went on the record. I didn't say that. <laughs> Maybe alternating. I mean, evenings are are possible yeah, for me, but they're but they're hard also because 
I have kids and right. I have no, soccer. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. 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 Um, mm-hmm. So what works best for you during the day, at the end of the work day, kind of thing, 4 o'clock or something? What about early morning? Define <laughs> early. Well, I'm, I'm thinking for something like this, early would be 8 or 9 o'clock. You know, but I, I'm yeah. thinking I'm pe- catching whoever has to go to work somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, catch you guys on the way to work. Um, I could do as early as eight, because by that time I have everybody where they need to be. <laughs> yeah, and if, and if I've got notice, I can flex my schedule. Yeah. So I could like add some time to a telework <clears throat> day or something like that, and my boss is amenable to that if it's not too frequent. Because so, I can do mornings with, so with like notice. It's so like an 8 to 9.30? Yeah. Would, yeah, would that actually be good for you? It would be good for you. Uh, it would depend on the day, but yeah. And I think if we really tighten, if we tighten up the agenda and, and make sure that we stick to things that have to be dealt with, mm-hmm. you know, we could probably do an hour meeting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we could after we get, yeah. get good at I don't know if you feel up to driving down to Worcester from Worcester for an hour, right? but you're not no, that No, it's, it's fine. I don't mind driving out. Williamstown isn't that bad. It's only 20 minutes. So. Yeah. Bob, is it 8? Eight, eight, that's, that's fine. Yeah. So, all right, so I'm, I'm going to try, try that. Yeah, we can try it, and if it doesn't yeah. work for yep. somebody, we can just. So 8 a.m. and. Um, so do we want to do this monthly? Or is that. How do you Twice guys want to try to do it? I, I, do you want to try to set up a monthly day of the um, a day of the month, or do you want to just try it by ear again, and I'll just circulate a series of possible dates and let people pick it out? I think we ought to give the eight a.m. meeting time a try without locking ourselves into a specific okay. day, just in case there's something we're not thinking about. So I'll say circulate a set of dates to pick from. Yeah. Um, just. So, a menu of dates. I'm I'm going to be out of the country the 16th to the 28th of September. That should be okay because yeah, I, I don't think. So, yeah, yeah, I don't mm-hmm. think it'll be a problem. So, well. what day is though? Me? Yeah. I am leaving on the 16th, and I am not getting back until the 27th. And then the That's September, you said. September, yeah. yes. Okay. Otherwise, I'm around. That's one of the reasons I have such a tight leave time. Okay. <laughs> so we're taking two weeks to go to England. All right, that's good. I will, I'll keep. And I'm out of town for work the 12th and 13th of September. Actually, I could do the 12th because I leave that afternoon. So if we're doing early morning, I could do the 12th. But that's, the morning of the but that's like only two weeks away. Right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, we so that being, shouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah, that I mean, you're looking for either very end of September yeah. or beginning of October, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, uh, that would be it. It'd be okay. at, because so, in, yeah. our next meeting's the 11th for the full board. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah, the 28th would work. The 27th would not work for me because I'm going to be on an airplane. Okay. okay. But the 28th, I could make work. I'll, I'll, and I'll, after that. I'll grab a list of dates then and just pass them around, and, you know. Pick which ones work, and we'll send them back. Right? It, it, you know, generally, listen. My experience is it takes usually a couple of emails to pin down a meeting mm-hmm. date. You know, you, you send out a bunch of things for people to choose from. They choose some number of them, and then you just look and you say, "Well, who? You know, how are we going to be able to get a working number of people together? Because we're not all going to be able to make every meeting. It's mm-hmm. not going to ever happen." <laughs> I'm going to try. Yeah. But I want an award. <laughs> we, an award. we will create out gold <laughs> stars, huh? Yeah. 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 I want a gold star, too. I, I haven't gotten them since that. kindergarten. I miss them. This room would not be available on Mondays at that time. Well, we have a meeting that starts in here at 9 o'clock every Monday. So. Oh, we can join them. <laughs> We're here. All right, so... Uh, so, and so, there are 14 of us, so you can imagine. Oh, well, then <laughs> we're outnumbered. <laughs> All right. So for future meeting dates, locations, and times, then we'll be looking at 90 minutes. The schedule, you know, the schedule will be developed for 90 minutes. We'll be looking at trying to start at 9 a.m., and I'll pick a series of dates that will be after the 27th of September. Sounds good. All right, so now we're up to the public comment. Do you have anything to <laughs> right. So now the committee member roundtable. And this is something I'm also planning on keeping in the agenda, even though it, I'll, I'll 
keep it down to five minutes or even less if that's all we need. But I think it's important that we all, especially to give me feedback to let me know if the meeting's being run right. My job is not here. Like, I, I don't view my job as a chair to be everybody's leader. My job is to run the meeting, make sure we have an agenda. The agenda is taken care of, and the business that, we have, that we've all agreed that we have to take care of gets taken care of. So I need to be told if I'm doing what you guys expect. Uh, the, and the other thing is there may be things that are, people want to bring up for future meetings or just want to mention. So in, in light of that, I, I, I want to mention two things real quick. One thing is I have been introduced to a third way of board voting here in Vermont with the, the CUD. And the statutory primary way uh, a public body votes, you have to have a quorum to have a business meeting and you have to have a majority of a board in order to make to, to make a decision, has to vote to approve a decision. So if you have a five-member select board, you'd have to have at least three of them to conduct business. And in order to have any action taken, all three of them would have to vote yes. They have to have a majority of the board, which is five, regardless okay. of whether or not they're there. Schools... Title 16 changes that for schools. We still need to have a quorum, a, a, a majority of the board to have a quorum. So a five-member board, school board, you'd still need three to have the quorum, but you only need a majority of those present to take action. So on a school board, you could have three people there for a meeting on a five-member board, and you only need two people voting yes in order to take action. Mm -hmm. Got the distinction there? It was two out of five. Okay. Yeah. So now a third way, which is introduced, it is not a, at the committee, that first way applies to us by statute. At the, at the CUD board level, there is a third way now, which is defined in, in, that, uh, in that statute for the CUDs. We have to have a majority of the board, and the board being defined as, you know, having primary or an alternative. So you have to have a majority of the board to have a quorum. And But in order to have an actionable vote, you only need a majority of those casting a vote. So that word casting presents so a third way. Right. They're, they're not, not counted. They're not casting. They're, okay. as, long as, we, as long as they're part of a quorum. Right? So if we have a quorum and all but three people of the quorum abstain for some reason, those other three casting a vote, it would take two of them to make a decision. Hmm. So, and that's at the governing board level, you said? That's Not only the at the CUD board, yes. Yeah. At the committee level, we need a, a majority to right. act. We're a five-member committee. We'd need three of us to have a quorum and three of us voting in favor of something to take action. So we'd have to agree. At, at right, point. essentially. So just so you're assured that he's not making this all up, <laughs> when he first told me this, I said, get out of here, Ron. It says 3061 quorum. For the purposes of transacting business, the presence of delegates or alternates representing more than 50% of district members shall constitute a quorum. However, a smaller number may adjourn to another date any action adopted by a majority of the votes cast at a meeting of the board at which a quorum is present shall be the action of the board, except as otherwise provided in this chapter, which has some other weird exceptions that I don't think apply to what Ron's yeah. talking about right now. It was just kind of weird because it, it's, you know... You cast a vote. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's interesting. So if you abstain, you, you've, you've sort of thrown things into a weird... Right. So then, because one of the things that I was thinking about, too, was if <laughs> if I am the treasurer or whoever is treasurer is presumably going to sit on this committee, there are probably going to be things that the finance committee votes on that the treasurer would abstain. Yeah, because you conflicted. Yeah. Right. Personal, yeah, but only having to do with your personal finances, though. You wouldn't be abstaining from the business financing part of it. Well, <laughs> yes. Except, like, I could see, so, so like, one of, the, one of the things we do here, and again, the, we're not huge, but we are fairly complex. Huh. Like, our director of finance prepares the budget, then the finance committee votes on it, but she, while well, she's a member of the finance committee, she doesn't vote on it because she's the one that 
prepared it. Does that make sense? Yep. It does make sense. I understand. <laughs> I, I no, I, I do. I understand what you're saying makes sense in the sense that I, I know what you're saying. Mm -hmm. As one individual, I mm -hmm. disagree with that interpretation because I think just because you prepare a report. Now, I, I'll tell you, I, I work in a slightly different world from some of these other municipality laws and schools. Or, or, but even here at Supplies to Select Boards, for instance, there was a, there's already been a Vermont, there's been Vermont Supreme Court cases and U.S. Supreme Court cases that kind of deal with this issue that, for instance, uh, when a school board's acting in an, extra or in an extrajudicial role where we have to have a a, a, an official hearing for mm -hmm. maybe a teacher appeals a firing by the superintendent or something. And for years I had been told that, you know, oh no, no, you can't know anything about that before you have that extra, before you have that hearing because it, it'll be prejudicing you. But as it turns out, when I went looking into it, there are Supreme Court, U.S. Supreme Court and Vermont Supreme Court decisions that say, no, that's not true. You are allowed because you are, ex it's, it's anticipated the way the laws are written that you will be involved in certain steps. In, order, in, in other words, you might get initial for in a school board thing, we might get initial information from the superintendent saying, uh, and going into executive session and saying, listen, I'm having such and such trouble with this educator. And I, I, you know, it hasn't worked. I put her on remedial training, et cetera, and I think we're going to try to go through the process of getting her out. I just want to give you a heads up because it might lead to some issues. And then for the teacher to come back in front of the board to have a hearing, or in the Supreme Vermont Supreme Court case, it even went further. It was a principal that was appealing a decision of the board prior to them having that extrajudicial hearing. She was saying, well, they couldn't have done the extrajudicial one because they were prejudiced because they had rendered a decision prior to that on the exact same case sitting as a school board, just dealing with it from a policy point of view. And the Vermont Supreme Court stated, no, that's not so. That's anticipated in the law, and that's fine. That doesn't mean they did that does not mean that they were prejudiced in the decision. That is why I'm saying that just because you write a report doesn't mean you don't get a say-so on it. Okay. Because you might look at the report and say, this really sucks, too. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah. But, but that's just my, and that's mm -hmm. just one person's interpretation of the world, and, mm -hmm. you know, don't use me as an attorney. Or somebody please. at the meeting might convince you. Yeah. To not accept. I have to think about this. I think that, I, I mean, you might want not to have to vote simply to not be put in the position of having to express an opinion about your own work. Hmm. I mean, yeah. you, you know, you might have developed a budget that you didn't agree with, mm -hmm. but somebody wanted it in there, let's say. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure you should have to, to vote on Well, that. as long as we keep this number and have enough people there, it wouldn't be a problem right. for me to abstain. Right. Or the other alternative is for the treasurer to become a, what's that term, ex officio member, mm -hmm. where you're not actually a voting member, mm -hmm. but you're a member in the sense that you mm -hmm. have every right to participate in the right. discussion and all that everybody else on the mm -hmm. board has. And to bring, so that's another. I, so what, what do you do here? The person who prepares the budget is, is a member of the committee and does have voting rights? I don't know that she does have voting rights. Okay. I don't actually, I don't, because I don't go, I'm not on the finance committee. Uh -huh. um, so we are very, I mean, our executive director has been the executive director for 13 years. Mm -hmm. Our board is largely for very big 30,000 yeah. feet mm -hmm. oversight and governance. Um, we do a lot of stuff as to, at the staff level. Mm -hmm. Um and you know the board delegates a lot of authority to to will, um, but I don't I don't know if she's a member of the, of the if she's a voting member of the committee or not. Because um, I think all the nonprofits I've worked with, the the person who developed the budget, is usually like the financial manager, an employee of the organization. Right, and that's what our finance and, and director would she, be. Yeah. yeah, and that person usually. And we do have a treasurer also, but again, that's kind of a, you know, big. High level 
Is that a board position, the treasurer? The, the treasurer is a board position. Uh -huh. yeah. See, but in this case, the treasurer is a district position. I know, that's right. a, this is a little bit different. Yeah. Than, it's weird. <laughs> well, so I, I, how, what do people think about that one? I mean, as far as well, give give it some thought. It's yeah, not yeah, one we really to have to answer right, right now. now. All right, I have the question I want to ask real quick about paying the appointed CUD treasurer. But before I get into that, does anybody else for roundtable have anything else they want to add here? I just want to give you guys uh, copies. Uh, if you go to the EC Fiber page, web page, uh, you click on budget, this is what you get. Oh, um, wow. And um, just some comments about it are it's very sophisticated. Um, and the category, some of the categories I couldn't imagine. Um, and so I think we have... We need some help. We, we, we have a long way to go. Yeah. All right. It's so beyond my, my GNU so like cash matrix, experience. What's a ma matrix loan? But also the. But also, I think the categories are important because that's what allows you to compare this year's budget, budget with yeah. last year's budget, with the budget the year before, right. um, and, and performance, financial performance along the way. Jeez, so they have long term liabilities at forty four million dollars. Loans. Yeah, I know, but yeah. wow. That's, that's, that, that was, they said they were paying off their promissory notes. Yeah. I, I, I didn't realize they had, were dealing with that much money so quickly. So that brings up another question here. Is there a, does this state have <laughs> a required, uh, what is that, chart of accounts for... Okay. All right, well, we can take that home and read it. Yeah. This is round table. <laughs> and also, in, in terms of the meeting, I, I was happy to see you focus on, you know, the particular agenda, agenda items with the timing, you know, and keeping track of that and being strict. Good. Yes. Yes. Good, because I, I will be like that. Um, Ellen? Yeah, you know, this whole thing, this whole experience so far, I mean, not just the, this committee, but everything that we've been doing as a communications union district makes me feel like you're being walked to the edge of a cliff and you're going to have to put out your hang glider wings in a few moments. So, so the question is, how well are you prepared? And I think this was a meeting that was, I mean, it's hard to slog through some of this stuff, but I think it's impossible to avoid it. Yes. It's, it's, it's good preparation for getting our wings ready to fly. Yeah. Get and we have to have them flying before we head over the cliff, don't we? Right. <laughs> That's the oh, idea. <laughs> okay. I, I would, Becca, you feel free to stay in the room. I'm just going to really ask you to just actually to physically move away from the table. And the only reason I do that is to make sure that there's no ambiguity here as far as improper influence. And th this is just short, and my concept, and this is just discussed paying an appointed CED treasurer, and more is, I, I just, do we want to just ask the board, <clears throat> the full board, if we want to try to find a way, if, if assuming we appoint a treasurer, regardless of who it is, do we want to really work hard at finding a way to have a salary, and <clears throat> which would mean we would have to raise some funds, of course, for that salary. And my thinking is that the treasurer's job is involved enough both in expertise and time that asking an individual to do it, especially startup, can oftentimes be even harder, mm. you know, but to ask an individual to do it on a volunteer basis I think is unfair to them and I don't believe that the district would get what we're hoping to get on a purely volunteer basis, just, you know. I think it's a a good precedent to set that we care enough about the work being done that we value it to the extent that we're willing to put some money behind us to support it because we can't people can't eat air they they need money and this stuff takes time and time has value yeah. I agree that we should be paying people for their time if we can at all manage it any, any other thoughts? I mean, because right now, as I'm just thinking, let's, I, that, that's a question we need to sit down and talk because it's going to involve two sides, you know, 
one is paying out, but in order to pay out, we got to have come in. So there's various ways I imagine to approach that. And, and yeah. so, so do you, do you want a recommendation to come from this committee, or do you want a permission to raise the question at the board meeting whether we should compensate the treasurer? I would like to raise the question, and I personally would like to recommend that we find a way to pay the treasurer, and, and you know, I'm. Right, but the, the amount can be a comparison with other municipalities. But but you don't want that to be a personal recommendation. You want it to be a recommendation coming from the committee. If I'm, I'm not going to type it in unless it's from the committee. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that's the way to do it. I, I think the committee. I feel comfortable. You know, if you want me to to move that the committee recommend the board explore financial compensation for the treasurer. Second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 But I do have, maybe I should have oh, an amendment. said a discussion. Uh, but if I were the board, <laughs> I would say uh, that's a good issue. It's a good question. Let's figure out what what you know, functional officers we need, what staff we need, uh -huh. and, and who among those people Will be needs to be compensated. As opposed to just saying, treasurer, boop. That's it. Yeah. Right, because then the development committee comes along and says, right. well, you know, the really important person is the fundraiser. Right. And he or she should be compensated. Right. Just like, yeah. yeah, and it's not, it's really not on to say, well, you'll be raising your salary. <laughs> I mean, to a certain extent, yeah, when you're starting <clears throat> out, but. Well, I, and, and I, I, so many friends I would about. rather not, when we bring it up, I would rather not ask about other positions simply because you can start coming up with an awful lot. And I would rather, for, for the purposes of this committee, I'd rather focus on the treasurer. <laughs> and yeah, I, I mean, with the acknowledgement, she said, she, I'm being presumptive here. They um, aren't the only ones that will deserve to get some salary, you know? It's, <laughs> so, and. Well, I would say that that's not our job as a committee to decide the range but, of people yes. who yeah, get a salary. Right. Yeah. But the point you bring up, Bob, uh, is yeah. a really good one. You know, it's, yeah. we're, we're not saying that the tre treasurer exclusively should be the only person getting compensation, but we think from our perspective the treasurer should for reasons which I'm sure you can articulate. And we can make that plain in discussion, any one of us, too. All right, so what I got there from, I just wrote down for public cloud from the round table, what, where would a treasurer who is also a finance committee member have to recuse themselves mm -hmm. just to kind of deal with that issue a little bit more? Does the state have a required chart of account for CUDs? And that's actually something I'm going to put in because that email I'm going to send mm -hmm. to the, uh, I'm also, uh, that would be a good one for the treasurer too. Yeah. And uh, then would the board discuss paying appointed CUD treasurer in the motion the committee recommend to the board that we pay the appointed district treasurer an appropriate sum, if that's okay, mm -hmm. if that's an appropriate yep. interpretation of the motion that we approved. And then also just a question, how does this apply to others, just to make sure it comes mm -hmm. up. Yeah, that's good. Any other, anything else? All right. Move to adjourn. We're adjourned, we're all done. I don't even need your position, permission. <laughs> no? Uh, by Robert's Rules of Order, once...